Did you guys know that we have a new mummy tattoo to get? Remember when an over thousand year old bog mummy had this awesome tattoo and people got it? I've actually known multiple people who got this and it's awesome and it's actually on my list to get next. I love it when people say, you don't know what it means, it could be cursed. I hope it's cursed, my life is already cursed. Yeah, a 2000 year old Siberian ice mummy was found and these were her tattoos. You can see there's a griffin, which I actually love that griffins have been that pervasive in history, as well as some looks like antelope or reindeer, maybe a moose, getting taken down by tigers and a leopard. There were some other funny ones, like a thumb tattoo of this rooster that she had, which I would, I would totally get that. Now you may be asking, how does somebody in Siberia from 2000 years ago know about tigers and leopards? There is in fact a Siberian tiger, I think that one's pretty well known. This is its historic range as far as modern history goes. They probably extended farther, but you know, people kind of suck. And there are also snow leopards there. The current Russian Siberian leopard is the Amur Amur leopard. Unfortunately, they're critically endangered, but they are beautiful. And this is the current snow leopard range. They're only vulnerable, which I'm thankful for because I love snow leopards. It is amazing that somebody that long ago would be aware of both tigers and leopards enough to decide to get a tattoo of them, but I think this girl liked animals. One of the things I really love about the people who study ancient tattoos is that they hire on people who do traditional tattoos to figure out how it was done. And there are different methods of pre-electric tattoos globally with different kinds of pigment, different kinds of methods. Some of them are tougher than others, and some of them lead to longer lasting, better tattoos than what we currently do with electricity. From what I've read, most often older pre-electric tattoos use things from plants and ash and mix them with other stuff like oil for the tattooing process. We also have metals in modern day tattoos, and that's one of the reasons that you should be concerned about what kind of tattoo you get if you're in an MRI machine. And iron oxide was also an ancient pigment that was used worldwide to make red tattoos. And of course I have also heard that a lot of these methods have less pigment than we use today in modern tattoos and they don't end up spreading around as much in old age and turning into a giant blob. Would you get a traditional tattoo? I would absolutely do it if it was offered. Now you may ask, how do these mummies end up so well preserved? We understand the ones that are found on mountaintops, some of them over 15,000 feet up. They just end up getting frozen. Not a lot can grow at that kind of high elevation, and the UV light also has an impact on what is able to grow. That one makes a little bit more sense just because we toss stuff into the freezer and realize it's not rotten after months. It won't get rid of most bacteria, but it will slow it down significantly where it cannot be metabolically active. Apparently some people like to eat the goo that ends up at high elevations because if you decay and there's nothing to eat you, you just turn to oil. I don't know why people would want to eat it, but I would not recommend it. I can't think of any particular positives for eating goo. It's probably not toxic, but the bog mummies are a little bit different. So that can be in a warm climate, but bogs are highly acidic. There's not a lot of oxygen down there. So they end up decaying in the presence of no oxygen, which also turns them to goo. It's really the same chemical like process that's happening on the tops of mountains or inside bogs. It's just our hydrocarbon based molecules falling apart where nothing's using them for energy. They turn to oil. Incidentally, the oil that we use today is from ancient life forms that decayed in various ways without having anything to break them down. In fact, we only have coal and oil on our planet because bacteria had not yet figured out how to eat a lot of stuff, like plant matter. I do think that the garbage pits that we're making today will one day be oil for a future race, because that's exactly what we're doing, putting a lot of organic matter in a place where it's highly compressed and cannot decay properly. Who inherits the world? I always joke and say raccoons, but probably gonna be rats. Think they'll learn from our mistakes?